Right, this is the third interview since uh, I got here at the Artemis BJJ camp in Bristol. Uh, I'm here with Mike from Madison, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Yeah, I got that part right. Um, <laughs> you've just done your class on the triple threat from side control. Mm-hmm. Um, so just start off with then, like, tell me about your history in martial arts. How, what brought you to Bristol? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I started in 1996 or 97 under Chris Brennan. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, way back in the day, uh, Southern California. Um, I think he had just fought against Pat Miletic in one of the UFCs. Uh, I think he lost that fight. But uh, I basically was walking through my apartment complex and saw a bunch of guys doing judo and jiu-jitsu on some concrete. And I had done wrestling, so I thought I knew what was going on. <laughs> so, so I said, hey, what are you guys doing? And they said, it's jiu-jitsu, come on in. And I've been doing it ever since. Oh, really? Okay. Um, so uh, I've lived in uh, probably 10 states and 40 different countries in the last 20 years. Yeah. And I've traveled and trained a lot. Um, so everywhere I've gone, I've kind of found a new instructor. Uh, I've trained under uh, Finney McMahon and all, and I'm all Easton and um, uh, Tony Smith up in Washington at Lotus Club. I've trained in a, a bunch of different academies. Um, I run my own academy now in Madison, Wisconsin. It's called Foundations. Um, I'm a first degree under Nicholas Gruoriardis. For, for the oh, of course, yeah. Yep. yeah. Um, and I've been with him for about four years now. Um, so uh, what brought me here? Uh, I went to the, my very first Heidelberg camp was the first one last um, August it was yes the 50th yes. Um, so that was the first camp for me but it uh, it really opened my eyes to a lot of I've been following Globetrotters for years I've been trying to get the camps but it just didn't work out Yeah. and then I finally got to one and I was like okay this is the thing that I've been missing for so long because I, I used to travel quite a bit more Yeah. Um, so now I'm traveling a lot again I'll be going to winter camp I'll be going to Estonia camp oh, I'll be wow, going okay. to Heidelberg camp and then probably whatever's next yeah um so, yeah, and then uh, Jan, I became friends with all those guys playing Dungeons and Dragons, actually. I kind of work camp because I'm a big nerd. Um, and uh, so he invited me out to come and teach at this camp, and I thought it was cool. a great opportunity, and I was available to do it. So Awesome. Uh, yeah. Do you do many seminars abroad, like whenever you try um, to I, I teach probably maybe, not that many actually, because I have a wife and a, and a daughter at home so and a full-time job. So I maybe only teach three or four seminars a year. Yeah. Um, it's picking up more now, but I'm kind of getting more known. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, anywhere I travel, I travel over here to the to the UK quite a bit now, maybe once or twice a year. Um, so anywhere I travel now, I try and teach. Yeah. yeah. So how would you like? How do you describe your your personal style of jujitsu? What do you enjoy doing? Uh, I really enjoy fundamentals. Actually, okay. uh, I really like basic jujitsu. Um, I can play Dila Hila. I can play open guard. I, I can play spider guard. But I find that like what you were teaching earlier tonight is actually very fundamental to what I believe in Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah. It's helping me to improve also. But it's because if you understand the fundamental basics of Jiu-Jitsu, you can basically use that against any style of Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah. Support, yeah. stand up, self-defense, whatever. As long as you understand the fundamentals of what you're trying to do, you can apply those things to any kind of Jiu-Jitsu. So for me, it's very basic. It's very simple. There's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of um, leverage. There's a lot of angles. Um, I try and disrupt the basics, you know, the, the posture, the structure, the, the angle, and the base, and that's kind of what my style is, just basic, free flow, and wonderful submissions. You say you came through uh, initially through wrestling, mm-hmm. uh, would you say that kind of dictated that mindset of your jiu-jitsu? Uh, I did a few years of high school wrestling, and okay. then over the years, I was stationed in Germany when I was in the army, and there was no jiu-jitsu. There was no. just a bunch of army guys that did wrestling, and a couple of guys who did judo, and a bunch of Germans and Russians who did Sambo. <laughs> so I was exposed to, yeah. to Sambo very yeah, early yeah. on. Um, so I kind of understand the wrestling mindset pretty well. Um, and that has guided kind of what I do with Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah. Um, there's guys who are really flashy with their moves, their you know, inversions and all that stuff. But wrestlers are pretty yeah. linear. And, yeah. and the example you did earlier about who trains and how they train is very spot on. Yeah. Jiu-Jitsu has always been, even in the stuff that I learned when I was younger, is this becomes this because of that. Yeah. You always have a counter to this because of this. And in wrestling, it's you have a set of moves and you try and get the there. That's it. Yeah. You, know, yeah, you do course. anything you can to get it down to the mat and hit it. Yeah. So yeah. I try and get rid of all the crap and use the functional stuff. I think, um, I mean, I've, it's one thing I've noticed, obviously, with the, I came through in 2009 where Tenth Planet started to really become a thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've watched, obviously, you know, have my own academy as well. Uh, people coming through and it's normally white belts because they see the amazing side of jiu-jitsu they see the, mm-hmm. the flashy inversions and the rubber and yeah the exactly yeah. Yeah. yeah but I've noticed that the higher uh, the, the more advanced people get uh, especially up to black belt level 
people just don't care about that anymore. Like they, they, have, they can invert, they can play Dele Hiva and all this, mm -hmm. but it's, the details just get so much smaller. Yeah. And for you to say that as well, like I want to know the angle, I want to know exactly yeah. where this has to be for here. Right. Um, and it's, it's something that you can't really teach. As exciting as it is uh, 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 for me and you, I imagine, like it's very hard to teach it to classes because white belts want to see massive inversions and they want to see flying arm bars. Exactly, and, yeah. It's like just flying arm bar from Dan All Hiva. of that's great, but if you don't understand how to actually not get stuck in someone's guard, exactly, what's yeah. the point? Yeah, yeah exactly. It's, so. it's true fundamental jiu-jitsu. Yeah. Um, so how do you then teach your team to try and like get a, like focus on like how you see jiu-jitsu? Uh, that's a really good question. Actually, I, I try and teach the concept first. Okay. I'll teach a concept of um, like what we were working on tonight with the, the kind of triple threat. Yeah. Once you're in a position, the, there's, a, there's always a, a group of submissions that are kind of right there for you. Yeah. If you understand them. And if you can control your position and not let them get out of that position, like back to basics, yeah. then, um, then you, can, you can apply those submissions. So what I teach my students is understand positional control and then understand the actual technique of the submission and why it works. Yeah. If you don't understand the technique of why something works, you'll never get the how of, the, what, how, of how it works. Yeah. So an arm bar, for example, everyone's taught, you know, two hands on the wrist, hips in, bridge to the sky. Yeah. But no one these days is really teaching how to actually control with the legs. Yeah. You know, well, that's cinching up and getting the fulcrum behind the elbow. And not just, I don't ever put my two hands on one. I'm yeah. always controlling with an elbow or an arm because I'm using the whole thing to control the arm. Yeah. And I teach them the concept of that rather than this is the technique, do this. Yeah. It's more about get to a position where you know the fundamental of what you're trying to do and then the position will control the solution. Yes. That's, that's um, I think, something I mentioned, uh, I taught the first class today, um, was the idea that uh, controlling the joint above and below the one you want. Because actually, uh, Nick's video with Kit Dale Yes. That I got that from. Yes. So I've been doing that now for what Laser five years. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, so the same when you said that, I was yeah. like, ah, I can see why you've got the same idea. Many times. Yeah. Um, but it works. Obviously, the idea yeah. is, is, a, is a one of those jujitsu laws. Um, but how you mentioned then about how you teach the armbar, um, about controlling almost past the shoulder. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, I, I, I uh, got a lot of my, my techniques from pre. Mm -hmm. uh, so I learned his armbar defense. Mm -hmm. um, and when it comes to the armbar defense, it's the exact same idea is that, as I say, people always focus on that kind of hips in, control the wrist. They completely forget about the shoulder. Absolutely. And that's, that's what I'm going to use to escape. Right. So for you to say that you then latch onto the shoulder itself mm -hmm. um, and focus more on the legs, that would really make my day hard. Yeah. So I'm not. That's my if we, goal. <laughs> if we roll, I'm not giving you my arm. <laughs> usually, usually I like to mess with people, and like, especially black belts, and give them my arm. Yeah. There's no way I'm doing that later. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, so what we'll do then, actually, because that works really well, is um, I'll uh, go through like what I normally do for an armbar, mm -hmm. and then you can just go to how to kill it. Okay. So, <clears throat> see if this works on video. So, usually, if someone's going for an armbar on me, um, is I turn away instantly, because yeah. that would like free my shoulder. Right. Um, and then to try and like improve the, the angle of my arm, I just mm -hmm. walk my ass into right. my hand. Right. So, that's because I say most people just leave their legs over here mm -hmm. uh, and it's not controlling the shoulder. Right. So that makes my life super easy. Right. So, going for, uh, how would you teach then? What would you do for the arm? So I would actually teach controlling the elbow and the arm up into the pocket first. Yeah, that sucks. Right, and then I would control the shoulder. So even if you get your arm down, I'll actually start controlling the gi at the shoulder pocket. Mm -hmm. And I'll start turning my leg into the head and working on doing yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, that works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I agree with that. <laughs> that was very really nice. Um, um, yeah. Like, like you said, it, it, if the shoulder is able to move, the arm is able to move. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. That's why I was teaching the, the chain of submissions earlier because you're always looking to control the first joint first. Yeah. Control the first joint, the second joint will be vulnerable in the third joint, and then down the line. Yeah. <clears throat> and even if I want to submit the elbow joint, if I don't control the shoulder joint or the wrist joint, this thing is free. Yeah. So when I isolate that elbow by locking into that position, then the shoulder gets locked. Yeah. And that's where the submission's at. Yeah, so that makes a lot of sense. Um, <laughs> okay, so you mentioned like the, the triple threat class you did. Uh, do I just show uh, part of that? What I mean by angles sure. and controlling yeah, the elbow? Um, I'll just show like uh, the Americana setup. Yeah, uh, that's cool. Okay. Um, I'll use it this way. Okay. 
All right, so the, uh, the setup that I usually use is if I'm going past the head, I'm gonna get the wrist and the ear, and then I'm gonna lock the elbow to the ribs. Are you okay? Yeah, that's tight yeah. as hell. I, uh, it gets worse. Oh. <laughs> Once I get the elbow in, then I start applying the wrists. <laughs> right. Because the wrist is actually controlling the rest of the forearm, and the two bones in the forearm lock the elbow. And if I have my elbow next to your ribs and my arm is underneath your armpit, then this becomes very easy to do. It gets even worse when I catch the head and I feed this to the head, because now as I'm coming in, you can't turn away. You can't bring your hand to your other hand, and then I start moving my wrists. And if the guy gets really squirrely and tries to barrel out, it just makes it tighter on himself. Oh my God. So oh, disgusting. <laughs> um, that's no fun at all. <laughs> Uh, but it's again, it's notice what I did. Yeah, yeah. I, I used this joint to control this joint to control this joint. And everything is, even though the submission is not at the elbow, I'm using those joints before it yeah. to lock the rotator cuff. Once that rotator cuff is locked, either here or down, it can't really move that much more up and down. If the elbow's out here and they're chasing the elbow trying to yeah, get that yeah, torque, yeah. then the elbow can turn and they can get this defense and bring it in. But if the arm is down, they can't, they can't get out. Well, one thing that actually, um, again, it kind of fits into the same idea, is that we know whether I do Kimuras or Americanas, again, this idea of controlling the, uh, the joint above and below. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that when you were teaching it, and you just did it there to me, because I, I felt it, um, is that when it's the shoulder, again, it's controlling the joint above and below, so that would be elbow, mm -hmm. but then not a lot of emphasis is put on this shoulder, because that would be the other joint. Right. And so you mentioned it when you did the... Um, one of the techniques, how you climb into the armpit and yes. you control the hips. The transition from the Kimura to the arm to the... Yes, American you climb arm. into that other hip. Yes. Well, you did the exact same there. Your hip was fully in my armpit. Yes. So you completely yes. isolated the shoulder. Yeah. And that if I thought if I could turn, I could maybe screw it out of it. But because that was pinned, that was horrible. Right. And that, that this ramped up the pressure on this arm. It, it goes into, right into what you were saying before um, with your defenses. If, if the person doesn't control where the shoulders are actually turning to, yeah. they're not going to control the rest of the body. No, exactly. So you can bridge, you can turn your hips, you can try and barrel roll, you can try and do all that stuff. As long as I have that and that pin where I want it, yeah. and I bring them together, like I can make your shoulders go as tight as I want, yeah. because I'm bringing them down and yeah. in. As long as I can use my hip against your near shoulder, and my arms and elbows and leverage against your far shoulder, it's kind of like a crucifix without being a crucifix. Yeah, that's what I feel about. <laughs> yeah, that was horrible. Um, Thanks. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it's a compliment or not. Um, <laughs> No, that was disgusting. Are you doing? Uh, are you teaching any of the camps next year, or you just um, not yet? Uh, this first camp, like I said in Heidelberg, uh, I got to teach like a neuromuscular therapy kind of class, and I yes. had to work on a lot of people. But it was my first one. I'm not really well known yet, so yeah. maybe someday, hopefully, I can teach. Hopefully, yeah. I say um, it's. Uh, I mean, that just that bit of knowledge al uh, alone already adds on to I think that kind of uh, basic understanding of and, and mm -hmm. Americanas, just like how you are looking past. The joints that you, the, the usual suspects, and mm -hmm. you're already going to the other shoulder, right. the elbow. So that right. would be just a class on that. I think would come across really well. Put the um, word in for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, hopefully, yeah. Someone watches this. Right. Uh, no, that was that was awesome. So yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you for your time, man. So, so much. I appreciate it. Thank, yeah, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching that video, whatever the hell it was about. Um, please like it, share it, subscribe to the channel. If there's a bell icon, it should be on this side. Uh, Please click on that uh, if you want to get notifications for any new videos I make. If there are other videos around my head someplace, please click on those for more techniques. And in the description is a link to my Patreon if you want to support the channel in any way. So thank you for your time.